Welcome to the One Minute Apologist. One Minute Apologist. If you had one minute, Apologia. to be able to unpack for the audience. We interview the world's leading apologists to provide credible answers to curious questions. Welcome to the One Minute Apologist. My name is Bobby Conway. I am here with Dr. Richard Howe, the professor at Southern Evangelical Seminary. Good to be with you, Dr. Howe. Good to be with you, Bobby. Thank you so much. Hey, my privilege. We know that a huge book just hit the press recently with Stephen Hawkins, The Grand Weaver. Mm. I understand that you've had a chance to peruse it and was curious of your thoughts. Well, you know, it's interesting. I don't think I, it's, I don't know how long it's been that I've seen so much hype over a book before it came out. And I started wondering why that might be the case. When Hawking uh, made his last contribution to these kind of cosmological questions of origin of the universe and his brief history of time and its follow-up, he was conveniently sort of non-committal in terms of whether these things argue for or against the existence of God. In the book, he kind of doesn't really come in, in a way in on it. And now I think the public was like, okay, maybe finally now the world's authority in physics is going to weigh in because all this water's gone under the bridge with the new atheism, you know, the Dawkins and the Hitchens. They brought this atheism to the forefront, so now here comes Stephen Hawking. Is he finally going to break his silence, quote unquote, and, and finally settle this as far as the physicist was concerned? And I have to say that I was just flummoxed as to how philosophically naive I thought the book was. You can't take anything away from Hawking in terms of his physics prowess. I mean, he's the most important physicist probably since Albert Einstein. But the thing that's frustrating to me as a philosopher are when these guys uh, venture into areas that are really more philosophical than they are scientific. And so the book was uh, fraught, I mean, in effect, as I heard uh, Dr. Frank Turek comment, it's uh, Hawking thinks we're in the matrix. I mean, the book has a perspective of what is known as anti-realism in science, meaning, well, we really can't know reality. And so, but I was struck by the fact that when it served his purposes in the arguments, he was very, oh, he used, utilized really reality as much as he needed in order to make the arguments uh, that really maybe there's no reason to think that there is a God. So it's frustrating because he's a popular writer and he's an authority. Yet, again, he doesn't have the training in terms of the background of this argument of the existence of God, and he ends up making these, what I think are philosophically naive generalizations from his physics. I mean, I can't referee the physics debate in quantum mechanics, you know, those kind of things, but I think I can say that uh, it, it doesn't have the authority that it one might expect in these philosophical issues regarding whether there's a God and why is there something rather than nothing and those kind of things. So in that respect, I found the book very disappointing. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.